You are tuned into Let Me Relax. Hey, you guys. Welcome back to another episode of Let Me Relax. Today's podcast is kind of skipping order. Um, I was going to discuss black, fi- or Atlant- God damn it. <laughs> financial illiteracy within the black community. And then I was also going to give my thoughts on the whole B. Simone situation. But um, we're kind of going to skip shift. I'm still going to give y'all that. I don't know if I'm posting all three of these tonight. I may, I may not. We'll see. However, um, what I did want to post about was this whole situation with Gilbert Arenas. And um, if I didn't delete it, because when, when I, I'm doing this new method on YouTube, and after three, four months, if a video doesn't have a certain number of views, I'm, I'm chopping it because it's, it's just sitting there. Like, I do believe sometimes you'll do a video and maybe it'll start blowing up a couple months later. But if it's like three years old, I'm not doing it. And the last time Gilbert brought Lupita up, he brought her up twice. But apparently I'm looking at Chrissy's tweet and he brought her up. He called her ugly three years ago. So um, I guess with all this Black Lives Matter stuff that's going on, he recently apologized to her today. Let's go and check this out. All right. So he posted a picture of her on his story. And and he said, we can't come together as a race until the idiots of the race right their wrongs. He put that in parentheses. Um, And then he said, my name is Gilbert and I was an idiot for attacking one of our queens for no reason at Lupita Nyong'o. I'm truly sorry for my coon behavior. Prayer hands emoji, 100 emoji. Black lives matter, dead and alive, black excellence, blah, 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 blah. All right, so that's what he posted. And this was all cute and, you know, adorable. But like I said, he called her ugly three years ago. And I kind of look at him no different than I look at the millions of white people, like, for instance, Justin Bieber, who, um, you know, sang one less lonely nigger, however many, and I don't care that he was 13. I don't care that he was a kid. There are certain mistakes you can make when you're a kid. I'm sorry. I just don't feel racism is really one of those. It's not like we're in the climate that we're in. No, nobody's going to forgive you if you pop up with a video where you're 13 saying nigger. It, it, we're in too much of racial tensions right now for that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sorry. And he's never addressed that publicly. I did say, see, um, that he and Haley apologize for things that they've done. But no, I need him to apologize specifically for that in order for me to be um, satisfied. So that's just me personally. I feel like if, if you've done some racist shit, you need to call that shit out directly head on. And face the backlash. Some people will still rock with you. They will. Black people are very forgiven of everybody except for black people. <laughs> so with that being said, um, I want to talk about this word preference. <laughs> oh, my God. And um, I was having this conversation with some people on Twitter earlier. Um, healthy back and forth. No really arguing going on. Um, but I, wanted, I grabbed a, cue, a few key screenshots that I wanted to share with y'all so this one person tweeted that preference word is starting to seem like an excuse for your colorism dot 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 let's unpack this a bit more period so one person responds people don't understand preferences preferences don't exclude the other you can prefer fill in the blank that's fine with me but when you say I don't date fill in the blank it's no longer a preference it's a bias don't can't be included in preferences And then somebody said, I was trying to think of the best way to say this, but you've said it better than I probably could have. And it's nice to see these are black men. um, So it's nice to see black men speaking up. This is shit that we should have been doing. And I'm not I'm not saying these two individuals have not been doing it. There are some like, for instance, Broderick Hunter, and he's a dark skinned man at that. But Broderick Hunter, he's talked about colorism for the last few years and um, kind of not went in on, but checked the light skin and or not light skin, but the um, non black women when he was giving black women props. And they were like, well, what about me? So, um. You know what I'm saying? We, we got some men out there that's, that's been doing this stuff, but you have to realize that with, with this climate we're in now, for the people who have had their racism and colorism swept under the rug, nobody really responded to it, they're going to come out apologizing because they're going to feel that pressure. So with that, especially with all these brands rushing to act, and I say act because some of them are not sincere, but rushing to act like they care about black lives all of a sudden, best believe... If you don't apologize for your shit head on, 
and your your um racist or colorist tweets resurface best believe they put they gonna pull that endorsement whether or not they genuinely care about the movement at this point like the heat is on so with that being said and for people who feel like this is not this is um all made up or um black people are making this up here's a tweet right here just because most men prefer a beautiful light skin over a dark skin doesn't mean it's hate. It's called preference. And this girl responded quite eloquently. I don't give a flying fuck about your preference, my nigga. Read the room. And he tweeted this currently. While we all got all this racism, all this stuff going on, George Floyd, all this stuff. He just needed to say this. So he responds, 99.9% of niggas would choose the bitch on the left. It's a light skin girl. Over the cockroach on the right. 100% emoji. So y'all, and that's a dark skinned girl on the left. I'm, I might send these pictures to um, the video for YouTube. I might, I don't know. But nonetheless, for people who are still saying this shit doesn't go on, it goes on. This is a thing. And I don't know why black people have such a big problem with accountability because we're not the only community that has colorism problems. We're not. Asia does. India does. They have documents on this shit. Best believe if they asses go through it, we definitely do. We're the most pigmented out of everybody. So with that being said, this person responds, and he's a dark-skinned man. And I'll tell you in, my, in a minute why I keep honing in on dark-skinned men. But he responds, if your preference is based solely on a skin tone, that is colorism and hella toxic. There's a difference between having a tendency towards a shade of person and deliberately basing your attraction on what their skin tone is. Also, if that's all you have to offer, bruh, do better. And I couldn't agree more with that phrase. I couldn't agree more with it, really and truly. If that's all you got to offer, you, you, you need to go and do some self-soul soul, soul searching. That's what you need to do. Hey, you guys, if you would like to hear the rest of this podcast, please check me out on Anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all other podcasting platforms. Thank you for listening.